Hey, Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with our Gobo textures in Octane. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you'll get access to this pack of Gobos, plus our entire material library, all of our plugins, and all of our training. So let's talk about Gobos. Gobo stands for Goes Before Optics. It's a common phrase used in stage and film lighting. It literally means to put something in front of a light to throw some interesting shadows into your scene. Gobos can emulate anything from Venetian blinds to tree branches or maybe some abstract shapes. And we've got a set of 60 in Grayscale Gorilla Plus that I think you're gonna like, so let's jump in. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D. I've got the Octane Live Viewer rolling here. And we've got a really simple scene. In fact, let me just pull out uh, out of the camera so we can get a look at what we got going on. So we have, you know, two walls, a simple floor, a bunch of rock, uh, stone blocks, and a couple of vases. But in the right perspective, with the right cropping, it can look pretty convincing. Like we're looking at the in the corner of a room or something like that. And if you're wondering what these guides are on my screen, that is our brand new plugin, Social Frame. Social Frame is a little plugin that goes, a little tag that goes on your camera to help you visualize your social media cropping. So you can see here, I can pre-visualize, pre -visualize, if I could say that word, a uh, vertical video, HD, a square, all the stuff. We've got all kinds of different settings in here for Social Frame. So I highly, I highly recommend checking that out. If you're a Plus member, you already have it. Okay, so we've got our setup here. You can already see I've got a light built in already set up for us. I've got an HDRI link tag on it, which you're probably wondering why, and that's because HDRI link actually works with all of our Gobos. So we have a ton of great Gobos here. If you're a Plus member, you get access to all of them, and it works with HDRI link. So if I select that tag and I want to try out different looks, I can do that just as easily as I can with an HDRI, like the way we work with HDRI link and HDRI. So we can just try out a bunch of different Gobos here until we rest on one that we like. Okay. Um, so we're going to show you how to set this up in Octane here. I have a uh, a light that I've already created that I've kind of just matched the position of. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, and we are going to turn our other gobo off. I'm going to jump out of the camera view here so we can just see what's going on. I have a very large area light here. So if we threw a gobo on this area light at this size, it's not really going to work because that texture is going to be diffused down and it's just going to be really soft and you won't notice it. There won't be any, any real uh, clarity in there. So we need to fix that. So the way that we're going to do that is just make a really small area light. So I'm going to come over to details and we're going to change our light size to maybe one centimeter. And when we do that, if I turn off our dome light, which is a nice little H dry that we've got going on here, you're going to notice that, oops, wrong one, it's going to be black because that tiny little light over here is just not going to put out enough light for us to put anything on the back of this wall. So we need to make this light very, very bright. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just take 100 times 100, and that gets us not even close. So let's just do that again, times 10, let's say. Now we're getting somewhere closer. Now let's maybe times that by three. I think that might be as high as it'll go, times two, and that's as high as it'll go. So there is a little trick that I like to do, and you know, if you're an Octane user and you're yelling at me because this is not the way you would do it, then I guess let me know how you would do it because I, I just, maybe I'm not familiar, but I'll show you how to get this even brighter when we get into that part. Hey, sorry for the interruption here, but I do have an update on this. Uh, there is a better way to handle the Octane Gobo brightness, and that's going to be checking off under the L Octane Light, Light Settings tab, turning off surface brightness. You can see then it goes insanely bright, and we don't need these crazy bright power levels. In fact, we can bring that back down to like 10. And we can also, we don't have to use this. You still could if you wanted to. We can bring our power level of our map down to one as well, and then just affect everything with the power setting. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, so with our light, now we're ready to add our gobos. So under distribution, we want to go to plugins, C4D Octane, and image texture. Now from there, we'll click on file, and this is where it gets fun. We're going to grab our object, and we're going to add an HDRI link tag, jump back into our Octane tag here, and under the distribution file, I'm going to drag file onto my HDRI link tag. Now it's going to automatically load one of our area light maps HDRIs, like a, a softbox, but we're just going to go ahead and click on that. We're just going to click on one of our gobos here. 
Okay, we're not quite done yet, but we do see the, the gobo, but we need to do a couple more things. So we're jump into this distribution and we need to change the projection type. Now I've had good luck with either perspective or XYZ, XYZ to YUV. So I'll just do the XYZ, XYZ to UPW. Man, I cannot speak. Um, and we'll get that going. And that's that's pretty much the same as, as perspective. Uh, it's a little bit different. I've noticed I've had better luck with XYZ to UBW. Okay, so got that set up. Let's just jump out of the camera so you can kind of see that being applied. And now let's turn on our fill, our, our HDRI that's going to kind of give us that bounce light. And we definitely need to make our gobo brighter. So the way I'm going to do that, remember we topped out on our power. So we'll jump into our texture and then we can start to add power to this texture. And yeah, somewhere like a five, maybe, maybe even like a little bit brighter somewhere in there. That looks pretty good. So we've kind of got them set up right now, but it's not quite what I want. We need a little bit more control. So let's jump out of the camera just so we can see what we have going on. We don't have any real control over the spread of this gobo. Uh, we can do something with the fall off, but you can see if I adjust the fall off of this area light, it's not actually going to change our gobo. And I don't think it even has an effect if we use the perspective mode either. Oh, actually it does. It seems to have a little bit more of an effect there. Um, but we need to have a little bit more control even still, because right now we're seeing a tile of windows popping up all over our scene here, and that's not what we want. So let's jump into there. We'll dive in here. Let's jump into our texture. Okay, so this is what we want, this border mode. So right now the border mode is set to wrap around. So it's going to tile this window a bunch of times. We don't want that. We want that to be black. So we only want the window to shoot through the window. And there we have it. That's looking pretty good. And maybe from here, we might want to even scale it down a little bit so we can turn on the scale and we could, um, let's see, am I doing that right? Oh, this is why I think I needed, I remember now, this is why I switched to XYZ to YUVW because then you have access and can control the scale of this gobo. It's all coming back. So many renderers. Okay, uh, let's jump back into our camera. So now we have this ability to uh, sort of play around with the position of our, and I'm just going to hold down Alt here so we can get a little bit more fine control over this. And we'll just kind of move our gobo around here and try to get to that place that we want it. And cool. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I feel like maybe we need to bring um, our lighting up maybe just a little bit more so i'm going to actually maybe blow out that light just a little bit more jump into there into the power and we're just going to change that power to like seven somewhere in there cool and we might even want to bring our camera imager exposure up a little bit more overall that's looking better yeah there we go cool um now we've, we're pretty much set up. There's really not much else to it. Uh, and now you can just kind of come in here and play around with maybe trying out some of these different gobos. So let's try one of our dapple sun. Kind of this one kind of emulates sun coming through a tree. We got leaves dappling and stuff. So let's jump in there. Let's go down here. We're just going to offset this up. Now this one, we want to do the opposite. We don't want to clamp it to white. We want to clamp that to, or clamp it to black. We want to clamp it to white. So that's kind of cool that it can do that. Uh, let's come down here now and let's just find our light. Maybe something like this. And now I'm going to make that scale a little bit bigger. There you go. Of course, you can also come in here and play with the gamma of this uh, to get it a little bit more. You might want to clamp it down, or maybe you want to braise the gamma to get a little bit more dapple. Uh, it's really kind of up to you. It's up to, you know, personal taste, really. Uh, let's try another one. Let's try, let's, we've done maybe one of those. Maybe let's do, ooh, this one's one of my favorites. This one's kind of like these, like, almost like a, like a slats going through the ceiling or something. And let's grab, that one and we'll change we'll just offset it just a little bit there now this one i definitely want to boost the heck out of that light so i'm going to jump back into that light settings main or sorry let's go in here 
change that power to like 12. And now I'm going to just take that light and we're just going to offset it slightly. I just want to like bring it to that place. Oh, and again, um, right now we don't want white, right? We want to probably repeat that. So let's jump back up to here and say wrap around. So now we're going to get that repeating. Perfect. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now let's try another one. Maybe we'll try um, one of these one of these uh, palms, and we'll take that one, and we'll probably bring that one's intensity down a little bit, maybe like six. And this one we're going to maybe move over here. Go ahead, and just kind of find it in a good place here. This one we're definitely going to have to bring the intensity down of the go. Going to rotate it in a little bit. Now we'll take our camera and we'll bring that exposure down somewhere like in there. Another uh, tip is like you want to make sure that your gobo is motivated by some sort of real light. If you just have a gobo, um, shining a shadow on an object without any sort of idea where that light might be coming from, it's going to look really weird. So for instance, if we had a shot like this and we just saw some palm shadows in there for no reason, um, with nothing motivating them, it's going to look really, really weird. So it's a good idea to, to use gobos, but try to make, try to imagine them coming from an actual light source and where that light source might be in your scene. That's really helpful. Well, um, that about does setting up uh, our gobos with Octane. Um, if you're a Plus member, uh, you get access to all of this, plus all of our materials, plugins, HDRIs, and whatnot. And uh, have fun. Play with them. Share, share with us what you make. We always love seeing that stuff. And I will see you in the next video.